Hello and welcome to lecture one of pregnancy growth and development. We will be discussing the first trimester and the major events of fertilization as well as a few major definitions as we proceed through. On our first slide here you see basically the definition of pregnancy and humans are set up to carry one maybe two embryos. Uh, we're not really designed like a cat in other words to carry five or six although you do see that on occasion. It's typically pretty rare. Average pregnancy lasts 266 to 280 days. That's roughly 10 months. And the key terms like zygote, embryo, and fetus are defined for you here as far as when they technically are called what they are. The oocyte is available and viable for 12 to 24 hours. Now, sperm can live a couple of days. Uh, so basically, you have a three-day window for pregnancy. If you're around day 14, and which would be say the typical ovulation day in a perfect cycle, then you're, you're open for pregnancy a couple of days before that, you know, maybe a day after that. Um, fertilization is simply the term given to when the sperm actually joins with the egg. To accomplish this is a, a heck of a feat. Um, first of all, many of the sperm, the vast majority of them, are going to die. Uh, the vaginal tract is slightly acidic and can kill off many. Uh, many just do not make it through the opening of the cervix. And once you're inside the uterus, you've got a choice of going up the right or left fallopian tube, and there's only going to be an egg in one side. So you can basically choose the wrong direction. So only a few hundred, maybe a few thousand, are actually going to make it. And once you get there... The egg is protected, basically. There are barriers, and the sperm actually have to digest their way through what's called the zona plucidia. Um, the sperm has a tip called the acrosome, which contains enzymes, which will allow it to digest its way. And, and the digestion of the zona plucidia is action of all the sperm. So, you know, they're all adding on their acrosomes and enzymes and trying to digest their way through. Now, once they have broken through the zona plucidia, they still have to bind to sperm receptors and get inside the egg. Um, once they've binded to the receptors on the oocyte, and specific to the sperm, you know, the sperm acrosome has a receptor that matches the protein receptors on the oocyte, the egg will change and basically not allow another sperm to enter. So only one gets in. You know, this is called monospermy. The blocking of extras is due to once the sperm enters, uh, the egg cell releases calcium from the endoplasmic reticulum. And what this causes, if it excuse that, is cortical granules to release these enzymes here, the zonal inhibiting proteins. What these little zips will do is basically destroy all the sperm receptors, not allowing another sperm to bind. Plus the membrane changes and basically hardens, so only one sperm gets in. Once again, on occasion, it does not work this way and more than one sperm gets in and you have a chimera situation but this is the perfect world scenario. If you take a look at what's happening you can see a picture here of the sperm you know digesting you know through the zone of Plucidia and you see uh, the zip molecules and uh, right here from this cortical reaction will be digesting these little and getting rid of these little sperm receptors. That is once a sperm has actually broken free and entered and its nucleus is now heading to join with the nuclear DNA of the egg cell. Um, 23 chromosomes from the sperm, 23 from the female egg, and 23, 23 and 23 make 46. If you follow this, this gives you a, a detailed view of fertilization in steps 1 through 6, which is a pretty complicated process. Embryonic development begins with cleavage. Now, cleavage is just a nice name for mitosis. And this is not a meiosis situation, so this is 46 chromosomes to 46 chromosomes, just like mitosis that's happening now in your skin and all around your body. 24 to 36 hours, give or take, for the first cleavage event. Occasionally, the first cleavage event, the cells actually separate, and, and then you would have identical twins. 72 hours, you're about 16 cells. Three to four days, you're hitting the blastocyst stage, which is about 100 cells and actually is a, a tiny little hollow sphere. You can see the process here, fertilization occurring, and then a, a four-day trip or so down the oviduct or fallopian tube where you will implant to the uterus. I had to excuse that again. This area here is the trophoblast. This is actually going to become uh, the placenta. It's these cells, this inner cell mass, that are actually going to form uh, the baby. And these are 
at this stage uh, embryonic stem cells. Some hormonal changes that are going on in this first trimester is once the zygote forms, it begins to produce HCG, or human chorionic gonadotropin. Um, what this will do is maintain the corpus luteum, and the corpus luteum produces progesterone. Progesterone is famously known as the pregnancy hormone. You can see down here, progesterone has many causes, but basically it closes up the cervix, it stops the menstrual cycle, the ovarian cycle, begins the process um, of pregnancy. And HCG is made by the embryo. So it's the embryo itself that's maintaining the pregnancy and keeping the uterine lining from washing away with menstruation. This will be done for basically the first month or two, and then the placenta will, will grow, and once it's grown, it will take over the maintenance of the pregnancy and producing the progesterone. But for now, it will be the corpus luteum uh, of the ovary that's doing this. It's a view of some of the hormone levels. You can see estrogens and progesterones basically increase all the way through your pregnancy, as being the pregnancy hormone. Estrogens famously mediate everything female. If you take a look at implantation here, uh, this would be seven and a half days, the blastocyst implanting. It's these cells here that are going to grow these chorionic villi. Now this is going to grow um, blood vessels and this will be the placenta. And you can take samples of this tissue very early on and these are fetal cells. This here, ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm, is going to become the actual fetus. Whereas these other cells are going to become uh, the placenta eventually. So this would be only 16 days in. This would be a view of the placenta. I've got this image here to show you that the maternal blood vessels do not directly connect to the fetal blood vessels, but you do share fluid in this region. And you see these looping capillary beds of the chorionic villi. So what mother takes in is shared with the baby. And of course, this is a danger point for the first trimester. You're developing all the organs during this trimester, so it's, it's vital not to drink lots of alcohol, do drugs, you know, take in proper nutrition is what you'd want to do, you know, pregnancy vitamins, and making sure you're eating healthy all the way through. Be a full view of the placenta. Sharing blood through the umbilical cord, you know, with the fetus here. Functions of the placenta is basically to deliver the nutrients and oxygens to the baby, but also get rid of the baby's waste products. And it's producing urine and things like that as well, and you got to get those waste products to the mother's kidney for filtering. So there's a, an extra burden on the kidneys uh, when you're pregnant. Um, placenta also has an endocrine function in that it produces estrogens and the pregnancy hormone progesterone. Organogenesis is the name given to the formation of organs. Basically, by eight weeks, you are pretty much built. All the organs, organ systems, are present in the fetus in rudimentary form. You got a heartbeat right there at week four. Uh, by the end of week eight, you, you're basically there. Very rapid development at this time. You know, still extremely tiny, but you're basically at least at that stage, say, a fully functioning mammal. All the parts are going to be there. If you take a look at a, let's go back to the previous slide, a few events of the first trimester, you can see obviously the head is very large in proportion to the body. This takes some time to grow into. We have what's called allometric growth. We grow into our heads. And, you know, that's kind of the, the crowning achievement of humans there. Uh, cardiovascular systems running and functioning. All your organs are present rudimentary form, but we're looking at, you know, very, 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 very small, you know, weight of two grams. That's a give or take two paper clips. Uh, towards the end of the first trimester, you're starting to be able to readily detect the genitalia and tell if it's going to be a boy or a girl. Blood formation is now happening in the bone marrow where it happens, you know, as an adult, although in this case it's in the, um, area which is now yellow bone marrow in an adult. You know, in an adult, the tips of your bones have the red bone marrow where red blood cell production occurs. At this stage, it's actually in the medullary cavity. So was, there's a few differences here along the way, but these are just your major events, changes, accomplishments. Um, nowhere near as detailed as what you might find on those books, like what to expect when you're expecting, but the basics of the first trimester. And this will end our first lecture.
uh, lecture two, we'll talk about second and third trimesters as well as a little more detailed look at development.